Yeah, John Brown was the former CEO of BP. Uh, John was the CEO for over 12 years and during that time was for four of those years voted the most admired CEO in the UK. Uh, another thing that John did was introduce Beyond Petroleum which was BP's initiative into alternative energy. And this has formed very much part of John's mission in life now as he's now moved to Riverston where he's the MD of a private equity business. John's going to share with us his secrets of being a CEO. So good to see you, John. Good to see you. Yeah. So, so John, we've, we've got a number of areas that I'd like to focus on, if I may. And maybe the first one would be around globalisation. Mm. It's a term that is clearly well, well, if not overused, but you've actually done it in practice with BP. And I just wonder if you'd share your sense about globalisation going forward and whether you know, we're entering an era of hard globalisation. And if so, you know, how should CEOs address this sort of di different market? Of course, uh, globalisation has changed in character enormously over the last uh, decade. Yeah. I think at the beginning of the decade, it was uh, uh, the end of the period of having a company with a, an overseas or international department and yeah. a domestic department, very, very much a US model, yeah. which does prevail in, in some companies to this date. Then there was the idea of going out and being global, but actually going out from your home country and planting your flag somewhere and then doing something and because you brought technology or you brought management skills or money uh, you could go and do something and people thought that was fine and you weren't competed with. Then there was I think the stage where there was a reaction against that and so people began to think that they needed to invest much more than money and technology and actually invest into the people. So provide uh, a person in a country the aspiration that they too could run the entire company uh, all globally that was investing in their country. And this is a very important step. Mm. And then I think the final step and where we are today is all of the above plus, of course, direct competition. Direct competition from people who say, well, we are, we're as good as you are. You know, we can build a, a local company up, a company in name a country, mm. China is the obvious one, uh, and we can compete and we can win uh, over you because we have local knowledge. A and that, I think, is the state of uh, uh, globalization. Mm -hmm. uh, it means, of course, that the people in many countries are all competing globally. So yeah. the new competition is companies from countries to which you went in the past. Yeah. So actually now it's, a, it's much more of an open global market that we're competing in. It is, it is. Yeah. And I think it really are, makes people, I think it should make people focus on what is their competitive and comparative advantage? What really are they doing? Yeah. Because uh, uh, being the same as anybody else doesn't cut it. You're obviously not going to yeah. make a very good return if you, if you don't offer anything unusual or special. Okay. And then we, we talked briefly before about sustainability and uh, this seems to be another really important trend for, for corporates and, and the world in general. What's your sense on sustainability going forward and do you think sustainability is sustainability and it's sustainable in itself? Well, in some ways it, it, you, we can play with definitions. Yeah. You know, if you're in corporate form and you've set yourself up with permanent capital, then indeed you should have a degree of permanence seems to me and having yeah. a permanence means you've got to sustain through uh, you know high tides and low tides the wind and storm as well as the sun so you've got yeah. to sustain all sorts of periods and types and things and so you need to build in to your uh, way of operating a sense that you know that the today's transaction is not the last one yeah. I think a lot of people think of business as doing a great transaction today not worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. So everything from managing your brand through to thinking about your values and how you apply them mm. across everything you do, being true to your mission uh, and making sure that you don't damage uh, and take for granted and for free things like the external yeah. environment and leave a mess behind you. Or don't, not doing all those that is one of the many contributions yeah. to making a company sustainable. So too, I may say, is recruiting the right people and really investing in them and building them uh, so that they can take over from you. Yeah. So when you talk about sustainable, sustainability, do you think that companies will be more responsible away from the single transaction mindset? 
towards, you know, it to, to be sustainable and able to have an operating license going forward globally. Do you think that we need to make a shift there? Well, I think a lot of people do. And in yeah. fact, the, the world is mixed. I mean, there are a lot of people, I think, out there, notably many of the investment banks, for example, that, uh, and banks that have, have thought of invest, uh, that have thought of transactions as one-offs. Yeah. Uh, partly induced, I may say, by the behavior of their customers. But I think there are a lot of great companies that have been around a long time that think about uh, many innings match. Yeah. And I think that is what you've got to think about. <laughs> many innings, many, yeah. many innings. And then you, you clearly you moved into uh, private equity recently and there's a big flow of money into the sustainability area. Do you think that that will continue at this sort of pace? Well, I think money in private equity goes obviously where uh, first there are people with skills, secondly where investors think there will be great returns mm -hmm. uh, and one of the areas that uh, money is flowing into uh, is the whole area of energy. Yeah. Uh, and the mix of energy that people will use in the future is not going to be the same as the mix today. Uh, it's it, because people are much more concerned about the environment and they're much more concerned about security. You know, where will my energy come from? I'd like it local rather than foreign. So those two things uh, say this is an area which is growing and indeed alternative and renewable energy which is a small portion of sustainability, if you will, yeah. it is growing very fast, let's say at plus 20% a year compound growth rate. So uh, there are a lot of money searching for high returns. Yeah. And one of the things about private equity, of course, is it has a very bright line test. You can <laughs> measure the return, and it's got to be high enough uh, to warrant having people's capital tied up for many years. Right, OK, yeah. The, another question, John, related to the capital is that there's a lot of flow going into sustainability and alternative energy at the moment. But broadly, we seem to be in a quite a, you know, a period of capital constraint. You know, after the, in the especially in the developed world, what, what do you have a view on the on the severity of this and how long that that broader downturn could last? Obviously, uh, uh, the credit crunch, or however yeah. you want to put it, has yeah. squeezed the amount of debt available. Uh, capital available from other sources other than equity uh, in various parts of the world. And that's because people have been very scared uh, about saying, well, I don't care about the returns, but can I have my principal back, please? Sure. And so people are worrying about who they can trust, who they can't trust. In the end, of course, the world is growing. There is always capital available. And after small interruptions, there will be capital flowing to the right things. And indeed, yeah. the world needs a tremendous infusion of infrastructure. Population is growing. We need yeah. more infrastructure in every country. We need more energy. We need more food. We need the very basics of life, uh, and they take a lot of investment. Mm. And that investment will be forthcoming. Okay. And would you see that investment coming from looking at alternative asset classes, you know, private equity or sovereign wealth funds? Uh, I think they all form. Uh, an overused word, an ecosystem, if you will. Yeah. Uh, everyone has a different role. Uh, in the end, you need a lot of permanent capital, permanent capital mm. of a government nature, permanent capital from the corporate sector, uh, as well as capital which is semi-permanent, which is private equity, which pushes performance because mm. when you invest in a company with non-permanent capital, you have to remember you're investing with an eye to divesting. Yeah. Whereas uh, for a, a, a company with permanent capital, you're investing with an eye to invest. And so there's a slightly different uh, way of thinking about things. All of them are very valid, and they all add to the sum of what is needed, much as banks are very important intermediaries between people with money and people who need money. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very important. All of these things have been developed over time and will represent important factors in finance in the future. Yeah, no, I agree. And I'm also fascinated, John, by you know your move to Riverston, you, that, the time you spend in the PE environment. And do you think are there are any sort of learnings that you have that you think could be applied more to PLCs? Well, I think, again, the best of the PLCs and, and the best of private equity have uh, many, many things in common. Mm. The big difference uh, is the permanence of capital. You know, in, yeah. in a PLC, the capital is almost permanent, mm. and it can be 